morning dear students welcome back to yet another session of english class and today's class is for class 9 and we will continue with the lesson the little girl if you remember in the last class we discussed about kesia we discussed kesia and kesia was punished and you know why she was punished she had stole i mean taken some of the important papers which were lying on her father's table. And those papers were related to an important speech that her father was to make the next day in the company. But she didn't know the importance of that, but her only aim was to make a pin cushion. And for that pin cushion, she needed some papers to be stuffed in. She was looking for papers around everywhere. Unfortunately, she did not get so what she finally did was she went to her father's table, took those sheets of paper and stored them into pieces and stuffed them into a pincushion. That is a bag. She was making a kind of pincushion, but for making a pincushion, you need to kind of make the bag first. So she put these bits of paper into the bag. Unfortunately, her father came to know about that and he called Kesia and made an inquiry and she owned it up, which means she said, yes, father, I took those papers. And when he asked why, she gave an answer. It was for your birthday. I wanted to make a pincushion and present a gift to you on your birthday. And I didn't find papers anywhere, so I had to take these papers. But Kesia's father was not in a position to understand that. And because of that, I mean, because of her act of tearing the papers, she was punished. She was caned for that. Obviously, Kesia's father had a steel ruler and the ruler came down heavily on her little hands. And that created a hatred. She became angry. She must have asked several questions within her. Why did my father punish me? After all, it was for him that I tore the papers. I wanted to give him a gift. But he didn't understand that. She must have thought that, but she didn't say it. But there was an anger which went into her heart. But then she cried for some time and her grandmother comes to her help. And she says, come on girl, your father was very upset and I will definitely make him understand tomorrow morning. Right now, come along with me, I'll put you to bed. So grandmother consoled her. She was very much upset, that is Kesia, and in order to kind of console her, her grandmother took her and put her on the bed. So Kesia went to bed weeping or went weeping to bed. Okay, you must be clear up to this. So Kesia was punished because she had torn the papers of her father, which means the papers which were meant uh, to deliver a speech. All right, now, Kesia was influenced by another family. There was a certain McDonald's family which lived next to Kesia's house. They were her neighbors. Now, Mr. McDonald was a very, very kind and light-hearted man. So every evening, the McDonald McDonald family, the McDonald family gathered at a park. So there were five children, plus Mr. McDonald and Mrs. McDonald. They had a very good time in the park. They were running about, they were jumping, and they were screaming and shouting, and they spent the time in a wonderful manner. And Kesia was looking at them through a hole in the door of her house. So she enjoyed how these, I mean, she enjoyed the sight. She was so happy to see Mr. McDonald's family having a wonderful time. And finally, she comes to a conclusion. Why is my father so strict? But look at Mr. McDonald. He's so happy and so light. Maybe he's a different kind of father. So that fear which has gone deep inside Kesia makes us think that fathers are different. There are some kind and loving fathers and there are some strict and serious fathers. So this concept has gone into the mind or into the head of Kesia. 
Now, one day, something happens. Something very, uh, very serious happens. And that is, Kezia's mother falls in. So she goes to the hospital with her grandmother. Now there was Kezia's father all alone at home. And Alice, the maid, is also there. So it was evening and after the dinner, Kezia wanted to go to bed. Now what happens, she gets frightened because there is nobody at home. Mother is not there to sleep with her or grandmother is not there either and she has to go to bed all alone. And whenever she went to bed, she had a nightmare. Nightmare is a kind of frightening dream that you get in sleep. She saw a man, a butcher, with a knife and a chain in his hand and he was taking slow steps towards her. And on seeing this frightening figure, she always used to shout and scream. And now, with that thought of the dream, she goes to bed. And a few minutes after going to bed, she gets the nightmare. And you know what happens? She shouts, she cries, Grandma, Grandma, where are you? So whenever she was afraid, whenever she had some nightmare, or whenever she was scared, she always used to call Grandma or her mother. Now in her sleep, she starts shouting, screaming. She asks for the help of her grandmother, but unfortunately, grandmother is not there. Now comes the defining moment in the story, the most important part of the story. This is a climax, you can't say. Now what happens? Father is there. And father hears the screaming of this girl, shouting. And he comes into the bedroom of Kezia. He takes a candle along with him. And when he came and saw Kezia shouting, she asked, what happened to you, my girl? And she talked about the butcher and the knife that he had in his hand and the frightening experience. So father just laughed. He carried her in his arms and took her to his own bed and made her sleep on that bed. So after putting Kesia on the bed, she, he tucked her. He covered Kesia with a bed sheet, tucked her in, and then he lay beside Kesia. He was sleeping next to Kesia. And then Kesia felt some sort of relaxation in her mind. She felt comfortable now because her father is close. So both of them started sleeping and Kesia creeps close to her father. She goes closer to her father and put her head under his arm. Now when she put her head under his arm, she felt so light. She felt courageous. She felt comfortable. And father says, come on, Kesia, you're still afraid. Wrap your feet against my legs. Her tiny feet, they were cold with fear. And father said, don't worry, my child. Put your feet against my legs. Put your feet against my legs. Rub them so that your feet become warm. And Kesia did the same. And now her heart begins to melt because she has a clear understanding of her father. She has come to know what kind of a person her father is. And you know, she sees the other side of her father. We say every man has two sides. The brighter side and the darker side. Well, the brighter side refers to all the good qualities and virtues that we have. And the darker side, obviously, consists of the shortcomings and weaknesses that we have. So Kesia's father was no exception. So long, Kesia <coughs> had seen the frightening side of her father. She had always seen him as a stickler or as a strict disciplinarian. A kind of dominating figure but now she sees how tender and how kind her father is she gets a realization you see she has a clear understanding now she, now she thinks oh what a wonderful father I have he's tired 
and he works hard for me and there is no one to look after him when everybody goes away. He's all alone and he's hard but there is a nice, it is a nice hardness. There is some nicety in his hardness. It is a nice hardness which means there is some goodness behind his hardness. You see this is a realization, this is the understanding of Kesia. So when you have a clear understanding of something then all the misconceptions are cleared away. Kesia was thinking that her father was a very strict man, a disciplinarian and a dominating figure, frightening figure. Now you see she gets a correct understanding. So when you get a clear understanding of a problem, then all the misconceptions, wrong thinking, wrong ideas, they vanish, they disappear. That is what happens here and that is why we call this as the most important part of the lesson. The last part of the lesson, dear students, is the most important part of the lesson. You need to read that. Right. Now, as she is sleeping, there is a slight movement. She makes a movement of herself. And father asks, come on, Kesia, what happened? Did you get a night dream once again or a nightmare once again? And Kesia says, no, dad, my heart, my head is on your heart. This is a very important statement. Papa, I'm not afraid any longer. You know why? Because my head is on your heart and I can hear your heart's beating. It is a big heart. It is a large heart. And now she gives the perfect answer. Now she understood the real side of her father, the true self of her father, and that makes everything clear. So with that, the lesson comes to a close. So the concept that Kesia had about her father in the beginning is just the opposite of what she had towards the end. Think about these points. Find the true parents, true, true, true parents in your father and mother. Sometimes your father and mother may be strict. Sometimes they may be hard. And you may be thinking, why are they so hard? They're bad. They're not good. They put me into trouble. They always give me advice, instructions. But when you understand why they give you those instructions, when you understand why they give you those pieces of advice, you find the true father and a true mother in your parents. So finding the true father and true mother, finding the true parents in your parents is the most important thing. When you understand that, then there will be no problem in obeying your parents, understanding their feelings, cooperating with them and so on. Okay, when the head starts working right, it can feel the heart. This is very, very important. The head has to work right. If you have a clear understanding about your parents, then you can feel their heart. So to feel the heart, the head has to be right. You must have a clear understanding, a proper understanding. Then you will know the kindness and the value of your parents. Then you will understand how important they are to you. Understanding comes after misconceptions are cleared. So when you throw away all your misconceptions, then understanding comes. They are like fog, you know. Fog tries to kind of hide everything. It obstructs our vicinity. It does not make you see things in the proper perspective. It does not make you see things clearly. So all the misunderstanding that you have about your parents, they are like fog. So you have to clear that fog. You have to kind of make that fog go away. Then you will understand the real self of your parents. Then you will know how important they are to you. You see, sometimes it is very, very pathetic to see children abusing their parents, children arguing with their parents, children fighting with their parents. Sometimes children even manhandle their parents. They beat them mercilessly. It's happening. You open the newspaper every day, you find incidents. What is the reason? Their understanding about the parents is not clear. So it is the fog, the fog of misconceptions. They are hiding the true parents or they are making them not to see their true parents. So you have to clear the fog of misunderstanding. And when you do that, 
well, you will be a different person altogether. And remember, your parents are the best parents in the world. If you have this thought in your mind, loving them will not be a problem at all. So with this, we wind up the session. <coughs> I will be giving you some questions. Go, I mean, sit at home, read the lesson first, and after that, try to answer the questions. So till we meet again, goodbye and stay safe.